Hi, thank you for watching Digging to China. I'm Dong Shang. If you have not done so already, please subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much. In early March at the National People's Congress, top Chinese officials have lashed out at the United States with unusually direct hostile rhetoric coming from Beijing's new foreign minister. Qing Gang warned of conflict and a confrontation if the U.S. continues to try to contain China. The U.S. says it is not seeking to contain China and sees no change in relations. The spy balloon incident was a very important turning point in U.S.-China relations, which had a shocking effect on Americans. Because the spy uh, balloon flew directly into U.S. airspace, this was an act of aggression against the United States, threatening the security of the U.S. mainland and floating over sensitive military bases. As a result, the American government and the public learned that the CCP's strategic intentions are very deep, and there is a hidden conspiracy behind it. I think the spy balloon incident woke up Americans and made them fully aware of the threat that the CCP poses to the United States, which caused a very serious and even angry reaction among the U.S. government and the public. The Chinese Communist Party CCP does indeed hope to improve its relationship with the United States and the West. However, its readiness and the necessary policy changes for such an improvement are neither mature nor well prepared. Therefore, it is easy for sudden events to disrupt the process, and it is easy to revert back to the original state, which is the so-called wolf warrior diplomacy. I believe that this wolf warrior attitude serves the goal of subverting the existing international system. It has always been CCP's ultimate goal and has not changed at all from beginning to end. However, it might adjust according to different circumstances and put on different faces, sometimes being very high profile and aggressive and sometimes lowering its posture and play nice. Since Trump took office, the relationship between China and the United States has become fragile, and the spy balloon incident has pushed the already fragile relationship to an even more tense state. The United States has already begun to respond and develop a containment strategy to confront China in the stratosphere. At the same time, the United States is tightening its grip on China's manufacturing industry. Recently, 28 Chinese companies have been blacklisted, and the United States has also increased its protection of Taiwan. On February 28, the U.S. House of Representatives passed at least 11 bills supporting Taiwan and countering China. If you carefully examine these bills, you will find that they are very strong, specific, and targeted. Now the entire U.S. political establishment is re evaluating its policy toward China and reflecting on past mistakes. Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin sent a letter to the entire military emphasizing that China's threat is a generational threat. It is important to note that in history, when the United States regards a country as an enemy, it will truly deal with that country, as it did with the Soviet Union during the Cold War. The U.S. has clearly recognized that the traditional historical friendship between the two countries or the era of past cooperation has ended, and what follows is confrontation. The United States regards China as its primary foe. From the trajectory of historical development, the Chinese Communist Party's strategy towards the United States is definitely not just a series of diplomatic events uh, where they exchange words or a quarrel or name calling. Its ultimate goal is to replace the Washington model with the Beijing model. Let me explain. Back in 2013, when the Belt and the Road Initiative was proposed, there was debate in China's intellectual circles about how a great power like China should construct a global strategy. 
Some advocated going east towards the first island chain, while a Chinese scholar named Wang Ji Si believed that China should go west, which eventually led to the Belt and the Road Initiative. What is the goal of the Belt and the Road Initiative? To put it plainly, it is to take advantage of the situation. China selects regions that are more distant from the United States in terms of diplomatic relations and geopolitical connectivity, such as Africa and Central Asia, where the U.S. military's reach is relatively weak. CCP projects its influence using loans and the bribery of officials, influencing local society and politics through investment, loans and infrastructure construction, and even exerting a controlling and a dominating force while simultaneously eliminating the U.S. influence in these areas. This is the first phase of Xi Jinping's global strategy. Next came with the Ukraine conflict. China used two methods. One is called the attribu uh, attribution theory, which is to push all responsibility for the war onto the United States. And the other is called the humiliation theory, which involves insulting the United States. Beijing accused the US of being hegemonic, bullying and wielding power and of engaging in long arm just, uh, jurisdiction, unilateral sanctions and Cold War thinking. If the CCP wants to bring down someone, it must first discredit them and launch a smear campaign against the United States. The goal is to overturn the United States' position as a global leader in values, and even portray the United States as a warmonger and aggressive country. This is the second phase. The third phase is from the 20th Party Congress, the second plenum, to the People's Congress in March. During this time frame, Xi Jinping restructured the institutions, established a national mobilization office, and issued temporary orders for the military to comply with civil litigation laws, among other things. Xi Jinping's purpose in doing so is twofold. On the one hand, he is consolidating power by reforming these government institutions, which is his goal within the party and domestically. On the other hand, he wants to establish a war mechanism that integrates peacetime and wartime. What does this mean? Look at what the National Mobilization Office does. It is used for grassroots mobilization. In the event of war, you can recruit soldiers and mobilize resources. The military complies with the civil litigation laws. What does this mean? It means that Military power overrides legal power. The theater commander can replace judges and the prosecutors, which is a means of controlling the judiciary. These actions indicate that Xi Jinping is preparing for war. Of course, he uh, didn't say he wanted to declare war directly against the United States, but rather that China is not afraid if the U.S. wants to invade. These signs indicate that Xi Jinping is preparing for a final showdown with the United States. In summary, the CCP has never accepted international security system led by the U.S., such as the United Nations, NATO, and the Indo-Pacific Alliance framework. The CCP does not recognize or accept it, as it believes it is used by the U.S. to encircle and isolate China. China also does not accept the international financial system dominated by the U.S. dollar, such as the International Monetary Fund, the World Bank, and so on. The CCP can no longer tolerate or accept the U.S. dollar's dominant financial position and even seeks to undermine and replace the U.S. dollar. This is why the CCP has led the establishment of organizations such as Shanghai Cooperation Organization, the African Forum, and the Asian Infrastructure Investment Bank. The ultimate strategic intention of the CCP is to subvert and overturn the so-called American Century, Pax Americana, and then use the Beijing model to establish a Pax Seneca, a Chinese century led by the CCP, which is suitable for China's development and dominated by Chinese interests. This is the highest point of Xi Jinping's proposed great rejuvenation of the Chinese nation.
That is to exclude American influence and establish a new world in which China dominates as the main player. That is the true intention of Xi Jinping. Thank you for watching. Please leave a comment and a subscribe to my channel. Just click the subscribe button right here. I'll see you again shortly. Until then, be well.